We established in a previous video that if the white ball is between its backward rotation and forwards rotation, in other words, sliding across the bed of the table, when it strikes an object ball, the cue ball will then deflect at 90 degrees to the angle of the ob direction of the object ball. <coughs> what happens then when we play topspin or backspin is that the white ball will still travel at 90 degrees at the T angle to the direction of uh, the uh, blue. Uh, but the topspin, if it has topspin, will eventually pull it off that line forwards, or the backspin, if it has backspin, will pull it off backwards. We'll demonstrate that now, bearing in mind that if we were to play a stop shot here, in other words, with the white ball sliding on impact with the object ball, and Im imported the same height and speed into all these different positions, the white is still going to go at the same direction away from the object ball. So it's the spin that is applied, uh, or that the cue ball is experiencing on impact with the object ball that uh, determines where it's going relative. We'll demonstrate this with top spin. If you just have a look at uh, the cue ball, you'll see that it, to start with, travels at 90 degrees to the blue, and then the top spin will pull it forwards. So that's one way we can open the pack. But that requires a very, very specific angle, and it depends on the exact table you're playing on as well. If we do the same thing again with screw back, the white one will go at 90 degrees, and the backspin will pull it off that 90 degree arc. It does open the pack, but not with as much speed. And it does help if you pop the ball. But my eyes are tracking the cue ball slightly there, so attention off the red. You generally miss the red. Let's put the attention back on the red. <clears throat> so 90 degrees, then the backspin pulls it off that line. We are going to demonstrate that here with the black and explain how the pros on TV do these banana shots. Most players think that the banana shot, uh, uses side spin, but actually, let's just demonstrate it here. So you've got the black, and you want to go between pink and blue spots. So most players think that that arc effect on the cue ball is due to side spin. Actually, I didn't play any side spin at all, and you don't need to. It may add 5% to the effect of the shot, but 95% of these shots are created by playing backspin, bottom and lowest part of the cue ball. And then it just depends on the angle of the shot, depending on how quickly the white is running away from the object ball, and the speed that you play, also distance to the object ball as well, but the speed that you play determines how far the white moves on the T angle before the batsman pulls it away. So if I play more speed, the white travels further on the T angle before the batsman pulls it away. So there's our T angle there, going in that direction. Play this slowly. So here it's moved a few inches on the T angle and then come in here. And if I played a little bit more speed, so it's come a little bit further inside that. 
build up this because it's travelled further distance on the T angle before the backspin's pulled it away. If I play again a bit more speed, we should count the pink. Which we do because the, t the white travelled this far on the T angle before coming back. A bit more speed, and we should be able to get in this gap here. And sometimes you can get position on the yellow. Here we are viewing the cue ball path from along the T angle, and you can see very clearly that I'm on a low half ball black here. And after potting the black, the white pushes off at the T angle, 90 degrees to the path of the black. Even though it's got a lot of backspin on, it takes a little bit of time for the backspin to take effect and it pulls the white ball underneath the red uh, so that what appears an impossible angle to get the white from contacting the black between the pink and red actually is possible by using the ting angle. And this is what you call the banana shot. Here we see the banana shot from a slightly different angle, which shows really how impossible it looks to the average bystander. The white ball starts its journey actually one ball behind the black spot, making the angle even tighter to get between pink and red. But as you can see, the extreme backspin on the ball, allied with quite a new cloth, uh, gives quite an impressive change of direction from the T angle to the ultimate direction of the white ball. Now we discuss the T angle and how it relates to splitting the pack from a cue ball above the black, uh, or in Neil Robertson's case, arcing the cue ball around the pack and missing it altogether. The T angle, as we discussed already, uh, indicates that whether the cue ball is spinning forwards or backwards, on impact with the object ball, it will initially move at 90 degrees to the path of the black before the topspin pulls it off that line, depending on the speed of the stroke, the amount of topspin and the angle of pot. So if we play this slowly to begin with, pocket speed more or less, we'll see uh, which angle the white ball moves forwards. So that's just inside uh, the pack here. And I've marked the same position on the table so that we're playing the same shot every time. Now even on that previous shot, the white ball will still have moved along the T angle for an inch or two before the topspin took effect and pulled it forward. If we play a bit more speed, the white will move further along the T angle or closer toward me before pulling forwards off that line. So that indicates the white would go closer to this end red if we played a bit more speed. Which it does. Then if we play a bit more speed again, it would indicate the white ball going even further across the T angle, uh, along the T angle toward me before moving forward off it, which indicates centre of the pack. You don't actually want to hit the centre of the pack when you're opening them. The white tends to stick and stay there, landing on nothing. When you're opening the pack, hit the end red, you'll generally open three or four reds, and the white has a chance to escape into open play. So a bit more speed again. did and it stuck there as uh, warned. So you can see that we can control the red that we contact by the speed of the shot and this avoids the extra layer of difficulty involved in side spin or stun. 
So if you can, always, first of all, play to get the angle on the pack where you just need to play follow. And then, with practice and experience, you can get to know how much speed you need at this angle on this table with these set of balls to contact which red. Now, in uh, Neil Robertson's case, as you've probably seen on TV a few times, he plays with a tremendous amount of power, sometimes too much for his own good. The white ball travels all the way into the cushion and beyond on the tee angle before the top spin takes effect, avoiding the pack in uh, completely. A little bit higher. Let's do that again. Squeeze was okay. A little bit more uh, top spin. There you go. So that the difference in height that I played there was probably only two millimeters or so. But just going to the maximum uh, highest part of the cue ball makes all the difference in the reaction on these arc shots that you see the professionals make. And as you can see, too much power can sometimes do you harm rather than good.